Sonic Adventure 2 Battle has all the characteristics of a great speedrun. It's got fast pacing, action, and one of the best soundtracks of its era. Hundreds of gamers have come together over the past decade to work out how to beat the game as fast as possible. What has resulted is one of the most broken speedruns the world has ever seen. Just a few top runners can say that they've had the world record, and for at least a period of time, been the fastest person on earth to beat the game. This is the history of that world record. This is the world record progression of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Competition for this game originally existed from individual level runs, or ILs, grinding one level over and over again to do it as fast as possible instead of the whole game. Eventually, the idea came about on Speed Demo's archive to do a full speedrun of the game. Sonic Adventure 2 has two stories available from the start. Hero Story, where you play as Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and Dark Story, where you play as Shadow, Eggman, and Rouge. This video will be focusing on the more popular category, Hero Story, and the first recorded person to do a hero speedrun back in December 2007 was this guy, Yoshifan28. For those who don't know, there are three main types of stages in Sonic Adventure 2, and in each of them he plays a different character. The Sonic stages were built for speedrunning. Yoshifan was able to dash, jump, and most importantly, sprint his way through these stages. Your goal is just to get from the start of the stage to the end in the fastest time possible. Speed Demo's archive rules said that he had to stay in bounds for his speedrun. That didn't stop Yoshifan from using a few clever shortcuts in some of the Sonic stages anyway. Puzzle Room Skip, for example, was a way to get to the end of Crazy Gadget slightly faster. You normally had to go out of your way to shoot a missile to break down a barrier in front of the goal ring, but instead, Yoshifan performed a super bounce on top of a block while upside down and hit the goal ring from below. A super bounce can be done by spin dashing into a wall, then jumping and bouncing while being right next to it. For some strange reason, the game turns your horizontal velocity into vertical velocity when you hit the wall on a bounce, so you fly up the wall much higher than normal. As everything here was ruled to be done in the boundaries of the map, Yoshifan was able to do it to save time in his run. The tail stages, on the other hand, were slower paced. The goal is similar to the Sonic stages, getting from the start to the end, but how you do it is different. You are in a mech, shooting enemies and other obstacles to clear your path ahead. This, however, didn't stop Yoshifan from running full speed ahead as much as he could. And then there were the knuckle stages, which were definitely some of the most frustrating in the game. There's no defined start and finishing lines to the stages. Instead, you're tasked with finding three objects, usually pieces of the Master Emerald. They randomly spawn one at a time in one of dozens of locations across the stage. If they all spawn really far away from each other, then you're losing a lot of time, because you have to go all the way to each one to pick them up. Yoshifan would find out where the next emerald was by going to his screen and reading the hint it gave you, which is always specific to an emerald location. But this meant that he had to memorize dozens and dozens of hint messages to know where the next piece always was. So, not only was good luck required to get pieces in good locations to pick them up quickly, but incredible memorization was needed as well. There's also various boss fights throughout the game, but most of them were pretty simple for Yoshifan. Just go all out attacking them, and they'll all die quickly enough. Exactly 46 minutes after the run began, Yoshifan had finished the first ever hero story run of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. He had played on the GameCube version instead of the Dreamcast version because of faster loading times, and overall it was a very solidly executed run, but one that was still bounded by having to stay in bounds. But sometimes, boundaries just have to be broken. Meet Sonic Guitar. Sonic Guitar was one of the game's most famous individual level runners. He'd held world records in some of the stages and was regarded as one of the game's best players overall. Many players back then were IL runners, including Yoshi Fan, but Sonic Guitar was a prime candidate to beat the Hero Story world record. Sonic Guitar also decided to not abide by the inbounds rule set, so he had a plethora of new skips, some inbounds and some out of bounds, to use that had been discovered in the three years since Yoshi Fan's record. Many were minor, clips through a wall in aquatic mine using a sign, clipping past the door so you didn't need to open it in death chamber, spin dashing through a door to avoid picking up a key in pyramid cave. These weren't big time saves, but they at least helped him pick up a few seconds over Yoshifan. Super bounces were used in the egg golem boss fight now as well. 
You only have a few frames to perform each one, so it's a very risky strategy, but you can get on top of him if you do them correctly so that you don't have to climb up his back. Sonic Guitar didn't care how hard they were, he was going for them anyway and he nailed them. The biggest revelation, however, was Crazy Gadget Skip. Sonic Guitar discovered it in June 2010, and as you would expect, it takes place on the Crazy Gadget stage, where you play as Sonic and change the gravity to make your way through the level. At one point, you change the gravity to the left, walk on the wall, and then are supposed to change it back and continue making your way through the level. Sonic Guitar did not do that. Instead, he kept the gravity on the left, and then spin-dashed and jumped at the perfect time to clear a kill plane, a barrier that will kill you if you come into contact with it. He then had to navigate through the stage very precisely while on the left wall. Making any false moves could have caused the game to softlock, and he would have had to restart the level. He used the messed up gravity to gain a ton of speed and fall through a wall, then floated through space and landed exactly on the goal ring where he needed to. Yeah, needless to say this trick was one of the toughest in the game, but if everything was done correctly it would save him around 40 seconds. So, all of these new tricks put together, along with more optimal playing in some other sections, was enough to take more than 3 minutes off the record in December 2010. At this point, the hero story record was in a good place. There were still a lot of people doing individual level runs as well of course, but hero story was gaining in popularity. Sonic Guitar had achieved a really solid 4258, and months passed without anybody beating it. Then, in November 2012, something strange happened. The game was re-released on Steam, and runners soon figured out a very important distinction about the PC version. Everything loaded faster, so much so that the PC version would gain nearly 3 minutes just on faster load times alone. Additionally, the PC version had more hint screens on the knuckle stages, meaning the player could figure out where to go quicker than before. So ultimately, this meant that the world record could now be beaten fairly easily as long as the person doing so played on PC. Someone had to take advantage of this opportunity. And in December 2012, the guy to do so was Broken Arthritis, better known as Logan. My hands are starting to shake bad. Logan wasn't on the same level as Sonic Guitar quite yet. Some of his early records were casually achieved in races with other runners, and while they were faster than Sonic Guitar's run, when using the in-game timer to eliminate load times they were still multiple minutes slower. Gradually though, the gap got narrower and narrower. Yes! 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 Fuck yes! Yes! Oh my god, 40 <laughs> seconds ahead now. Oh my god, fuck this game! <laughs> 41-43. Yes! <sighs> Finally! <laughs> this record is hard to beat now. <laughs> this record is extremely hard to beat now. Yes, yes it was. He was now just 11 seconds away from a run under 40 minutes. But like he said, the run was getting pretty optimized. Pushing the run under 40 minutes was not going to be easy. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, two huge new skips were discovered. City Escape Skip, and Final Rush Skip. Sometime in early January 2013, Versace apparently accidentally found City Escape Skip. If you do a trick off of this ramp, and avoid touching a speed pad which caps your speed, you can actually land just barely out of bounds next to another speed pad. Sonic's foot clips the speed pad so his direction rotates 90 degrees while remaining in the same state that he was while flying off of the ramp. If all was done correctly, Sonic is now lined up so that he'll continue flying out of bounds, right past the staircase and fall through space to later in the stage. Final rush skip was found by Chain Chump. You fall off of a rail you're riding on, and then have a bounce attack launch you horizontally. This boosts your horizontal speed. There's an invisible vertical kill plane you're then trying to get through. If you do the bounce attack and are lucky with your speed, then it's possible to be moving so fast horizontally that you'll be on one side of the kill plane for one frame, then on the other side the next frame, 
and never actually come into contact with it. It's explained here by YouTuber Chubba Bubba. So you can see that on this frame, you are actually outside of this kill plane. Then on the next frame, you are outside it again. So there is no frame where you're inside the kill plane. You go from being outside to outside on the other side. After, you fall and fall through space, all while navigating to avoid more invisible kill planes. If all goes well, you'll fall and land on the goal ring, skipping much of the stage. So now, Logan had a new goal. Get a good run that had both City Escape Skip and Final Rush Skip. Since City Escape was the first stage in the game, and Final Rush was the last non-boss stage, there was so much that could still go wrong in between these skips, but they were two very pivotal points in the run. On January 30th, 2013, Logan was on an alright looking run, but if he could just land Final Rush Skip, it would instantly go from an alright run to being likely a huge world record. He slid his way down the stage, and as he jumped off of the rail, everything fell silent. All he could do now was hope that he didn't die. Yes! Oh my god. Oh my god, dang. Yes! I'm gonna do it, dude. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god, no way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. No way. This was it. He finally got his wish. The only thing standing between him and Glory now was the fight with Shadow. Yes! 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 Fuck yes! Fuck yes! Yes! Oh my god! 3921. The first ever sub 40. It was a great run, but still there was more time to save. His luck in the knuckle stages definitely wasn't the greatest, and his execution throughout was far from perfect too, like this death on Metal Harbor. Yep, it just ended. <laughs> that was totally my fault, but I'm gonna keep going. So he wanted one more world record, this time one that was better all the way through. He got on a run that was ahead, way ahead going into final rush. He just needed to land the skip. He died on the easier part of the trick. The difficult and seemingly random part, the first kill plane, had gone fine. He died while trying to navigate around the other ones. It was devastating, but all he could do is give it another try. Thank God. At least I got it second try. But I'm still like a bunch ahead right now. Like, I'm like ahead by a lot. It still wasn't perfect, but it was still a lot better than the old record. And Logan is pretty happy about that. Fuck yes! Yes! Finally! Fuck this game! Fuck it! It's over! It's over! <laughs> Finally! <sighs> yes! <laughs> Thank God! Logan's new world record had taken him nearly 2,500 attempts to achieve. All of the new strategies, new skips, tough execution, and persistence had finally paid off on April 13th, 2013. With a time this impressive, the question had to be asked, how long would this record last? Uh, new record. Apolog apologies, Logan, for taking it so soon. That's right. It stood for seven days. 
Talon2461 had been speedrunning a lot of Sonic Adventure 2 while Logan was lowering the Hero Story record down, but he wasn't quite able to get the record from him. At least, not until right after the first ever 38. Talon's run had some very good knuckle stages. He got great peace location in Aquatic Mine and Meteor Herd in particular. Yeah, right? It's close to yeah. It's... Wow. Yeah, oh my god. These were really good pieces. Wow. Still, the run was definitely far from perfect. There were some bad time losses across the run. Some were due to bad luck, others due to missed execution. Logan summed it up pretty well at the end of Talon's run. This run still hasn't reached its full potential. One more, one more, one more, one more. Yes! It's over! It's over! It's over! After months of attempts, a 3715 was the end result. Simply put, this run was fantastic. Outstanding luck in Death Chamber to save a lot of time, great execution throughout the whole run, nearly everything went well. The record was finally in a place that Talon was satisfied with. But in October 2013, as fate would have it, yet another big skip was discovered. This time by Master C77 and in the Eternal Engine stage. You jump with your mech between a tank and a wall, and let the tank's collision push you into the wall. Most of the time, you just jump and nothing would happen. But if you were really lucky, you would get pushed all the way through the wall, into space, and glide to the end of the stage with ease. Of course, there was no consistent strategy to get this to work. You'd pretty much just jump into the tank and pray that it would work. Eternal Engine Skip could save upwards of 30 seconds. That was enough to put Talon back on the grind again to get one final run that would put the record nearly out of reach for anybody else. After thousands of attempts, on January 15th, 2014, everything was coming together for Talon. Okay, good enough. Don't hit a kill plane. <laughs> oh. I don't have this in my PB, so this split is gonna be amazing. Wow, a minute ahead, I never thought I'd ever get this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes! Yes! It's the run! It's the run! Oh my god, it's the run! The run. That's what the speedrun would be known as. The run. The run was thought to be nearly flawless. It took Talon a few times to get Eternal Engine Skip to work, but that was the only significant time loss in the run, and even that wasn't too big of a deal. As the dust settled, people realized that beating this run with what was known at the time was nearly impossible. It stood for days, which turned into weeks, which turned into months. But as the time went on, although nobody is able to beat Talon, that didn't stop the top Sonic Adventure 2 players from around the world from discovering more tricks. Some were small shortcuts, like flying with tails at the exact point where two walls meet in hidden base to pass through and fly farther into the stage. Some were large skips, like a more consistent setup for Final Rush Skip. You jump off of the rail higher up, and instead of hoping to pass through the kill plane, you attempt to navigate around it with your boosted horizontal speed. This method was a few seconds slower, but since you didn't have to rely on luck, it was the way more consistent method. Then, there was the ultimate risky strategy. Crazy Gadget Skip Skip. Remember Crazy Gadget Skip, where you play the stage on its side? It turned out there was a way to skip Crazy Gadget Skip. It was called Crazy Gadget Skip Skip. First shown off in the tool-assisted speedrun from Hazel, Fusion Varia, and THC98, and later improved in real time by Dark Pro, you would go onto the left wall like before, and then spin dash between two invisible kill planes and fly out of bounds to the goal ring. Here's the catch. You can't actually see where you're falling through space, so you've got to use visual cues from the background. Even attempting this in a run would be absurd, however, because of the enormous risk involved, even though it did provide a solid 20 second time save if it worked. It was simply considered not viable for any runner to go for. Still, with all of these strats, somebody did start to close in on Talon's record. A dude named A Mustache.
From late 2014 through 2015, he took his personal record down from 39 minutes, to 38 minutes, to 37 minutes, before eventually getting within a minute of Talon's run. And then, on June 19th, it seemed to all be coming together. The new strategies, solid luck, and great execution had put him 25 seconds ahead of Talon's world record going into Pyramid Cave. Alright. So his lead was now cut in half, but A Mustache was still in great shape overall. For the next stage, Death Chamber, all he needed was good luck from the Master Emerald locations. Angry guy. I'd better get a good last piece. Nope. Come on. Just like that, he was knocked back to 4 seconds behind world record pace. He ended up finishing the run with a 36-11, 6 seconds away from the record. So close, yet with the crazy run that was needed to beat Talon, another chance at the record would be hard to come by. A few months later, in October 2015, A Mustache was on an innocent looking run. He was 8 seconds behind world record going into Crazy Gadget. Since it wasn't realistic to gain 9 seconds before the run ended, he made the decision to go for Crazy Gadget Skip Skip. On this run, he had no choice but to go for it to beat the record, but this trick was basically just throwing the run away. And then, this happened. I haven't taken any risks in Lost Colony yet, because you haven't heard me go like, Oh my god, Come on. what the hell is that? Yes! I got CTSS. Really? Yeah, I did. Oh my god. Are you ahead? I'm ahead of- Out of nowhere, a run that seemed to have no chance at world record was way ahead of it with just one stage and a couple of boss fights remaining. After taking care of Final Rush Skip, all that was standing between him and the record was the Shadow Fight. New world record! Yes! Did you get it? Oh, I'm so happy. What was the time? 35! I finally done it. It had taken him more than 5,700 attempts, but A Mustache was deservedly the new world record holder. A Mustache's record stood without challenge for a few months. Landing all of the skips in a run, including Crazy Gadget Skip Skip, was menacing for anybody to try to tackle. Eventually, a Japanese runner known as Shibaki would become a close competitor, getting personal bests in the 36 minute range. And in January 2016, he got a run quite close to the world record. But there was something very strange about this run. The run finished with a time of 35.42, approximately 5 seconds behind the record. However, Sonic Adventure 2 also has an in-game timer that displays how long it took you to beat each level at the end of every level. When taking the timer for each stage, and adding them all up, the time of a Sonic Adventure 2 speedrun is about 10 minutes faster overall because you're skipping all the time between the levels in your calculation. For years, the in-game timing method served as a secondary method to traditional real-time timer from start to finish. This 3542, however, finished with an in-game time of 2419, while A Mustache's world record had an in-game time of 2439, a difference of 20 seconds. So whose run was really faster? As it turns out, the only reason Shibaki's speedrun was slower than A Mustache's run with real time was because his PC wasn't as good. It loaded everything a bit slower, thereby adding about 25 seconds of load time across the whole run. This wasn't factored into the in-game timer. So, even though Shibaki speedrun was slower with real time, it was actually about 20 seconds of gameplay faster. To account for this, the community decided to time all runs with the in-game timer from then forward, officially making the new world record a 2419 by Shibaki. This was around the time when the Green Forest wall run began to be used as well. There's an area on loops where the game prevents you from falling by taking Sonic's downward direction and forcing him that way. The trick takes advantage of that by spin dashing from the side of the loop, then turning left and hitting this area. The game will then force Sonic to his down direction, in this case toward the big tree that you normally have to use springs to climb up. By then using a homing attack, the player is able to climb all the way up the tree without having to use the springs. From there, the era of Japanese dominance began. Throughout nearly all of 2016, the Hero Story record was held by either one of two Japanese runners, Shibaki and Emerua. 
It seems that Emerua didn't stream his attempts live on Twitch, but he was still a very respected runner who lowered the record with a couple of amazing runs. On the other hand, Shibaki did stream on Twitch. For simplicity's sake, he still used a real-time timer on his stream, even though the category was officially timed with in-game timing. But that didn't stop him from throwing thousands of attempts at the game. 13,000 to be precise. Nice! A 24.03. Shibaki and Emerua had taken the game down to just above the 23 minute mark. As 2016 came to a close, the atmosphere of Sonic Adventure 2 speedruns had changed. Gone were the days of finding revolutionary new strategies that would save dozens of seconds, and in their place was a world of precision. Runners trying to optimize every last second from the game. A new world record contender emerged, Dark Pro. He pioneered death chamber death strats, intentionally killing Knuckles in certain situations to respawn closer to other pieces, or dying to essentially re-roll the locations of the pieces. He was previously more of a speedrunning scientist, helping find some strategies for the crazy gadget Skip Skip, but he eventually tried his hand at doing some of the speedruns too. And he too was really, really good. But 2017 would turn into a dogfight of epic proportions, shaving seconds off of a speedrun that was already extremely optimized. These guys all streamed on Twitch, once again often with a real-time timer on screen even though it was officially timed with the in-game timer. As the record traded hands over and over, the player's skills just got better and better. PB'd. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, Dr. Robotnik, scientist well, extraordinaire, have probably. finally completed yeah. my greatest invention ever. I'm disappointed. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> That might be some memes. And on March 26, 2017, Dark Pro lowered the world record to a 2322. This was the fifth time in four months that the record had been lowered. But what made this record particularly amazing was that, even with all of the risky strategies, Dark Pro decided to go for the older, way riskier, but faster version of Final Rush Skip, just because he could and wanted to save the time. Oh. Huh. He got it, and finished with an absolutely amazing record. And that is not where the world record stands today. No, there's one final record to talk about. Dark Pro's record stood for many months, but somebody did beat it. This is Dage 4. He had been playing the Sonic Adventure games for most of his life, but didn't complete a full game speedrun of either for a long time. He very quickly picked up the world record in most categories of the first Sonic Adventure game, so he then turned his attention towards Sonic Adventure 2. There weren't any significant new strategies for him to use. All he could do was pray for good luck and play perfectly. More perfectly than anybody else before him. And on February 28th, 2018, Dage did this. It just happened. It fucking just happened. It just fucking happened.